Alrighty, so today, episode 6 of the Pilots franchise, 5 or 6, I can't remember, but we're back and we're gonna start season 2, so I hope you guys do enjoy it. Of course, if you do, hit that thumbs up down below, easiest way to show me that you enjoy it, and also it's the easiest way to support me. Of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and make sure you never miss a video, and of course, in the comment section, get involved, let me know what you think of the series, how we can improve it, what we need to do, trades, roster moves, whatever it is, let me know down below. That's about it, let's get into it. All right, so quick, quick little quick little housekeeping. That's what's the word. So center field, Adolis Garcia has been bumped up a little bit. You guys really seem to do that or want that, I should say. So I kind of tried to mimic what boost he was given in the most recent riding rosters update. So you guys can see those are the boosts that I gave him. I know 16, 17, 10, 15 seem really high, but if you look at his attributes, they're not really that improved, right? They're still all below 70. And then his potential was boosted up to 85. So there's that. Another housekeeping thing. Willie Castro is an 80. And that's because I made him a second baseman. That's the only change that was made there. So there's that. And then currently the lineups are all set. We're looking good. And I feel like we've definitely turned this team into a lot better of a squad. And we're not necessarily a competitor for the wild card or anything just yet. But I still think the team is a lot stronger. So with that being said, I was looking at potential trades because we are, as you can see right below me, 27 men out of the 40-man roster, but we're only allowed to have 26. Trade time, right? Uh, a lot of you guys seem to possibly say Choi and Harold Castro is the two players that are kind of out the door. I kind of agree, right? Like, they're not necessarily going to get a lot of time. And I was looking for another prospect. Might as well pick up prospects, right? Kind of build for the future, but also potential trade pieces. And a name that I thought about who throws gas, and I don't want to say he's written off, but I feel like a lot of people are starting to kind of just kind of forget about him. Hunter Green, unless you're like a Reds fan, but I feel like a lot of people are kind of starting to call him a bust because of the injuries and he's not necessarily doing well. I mean, the guy's still 21, 22 maybe in real life. Let's pick him up. And if he does well, we keep him and things go well. And if he doesn't, we can always trade him and potentially get a reliever or another player in the future. So with that being said, I was like, who could we trade to potentially bring this player to us? You know, Hunter Green, I think, is, a, is just a really cool pickup. Alex Fido makes the deal happen. Boom. There we go. So there is that new addition. Quick little trade right off the rip. And yeah, he goes right into the AAA squad. Automatically becomes the best AAA pitcher that we have. And now we're down to 26 men. And the pitching rotation is set. I mean, Scooball, Mize, Verlander, Scherzer, and Boyd. We got Turnbull, Norris, Cisnero, Jimenez, Adam, Soto, and Fuller. I'm actually going to flip these two because Soto wasn't that great in the setup role. We've got a couple guys in the farm system as well. And then our lineups are all set. We should be good. I mean, we're going to have a lot of matchups being played, but I really like the team. So I accidentally simmed a game. That's why we're 0-1 currently in the <laughs> spring training. Um, we lost 7-6 to six in extras. But um, yeah, I've also looked at contracts. I'm not 100% sure about Matthew Boyd. I feel like I probably should keep him. But yeah, um, Candelario potentially as well. But I'm going to see what happens. I want to see what happens because I'm definitely always looking to change the team, build the team, improve the team. So there's that. Another thing that you guys also brought up was that you wanted me to improve the stadium. I'm working on it. I'm actually trying to record in advance because I am going to be out of town the weekend that this goes live. So I wanted to like get at least get an episode recorded and then I'll try to make the stadium more of an MLB stadium since we're now in season two. And I think it's time to start building that stadium up as we are improving. So regular season time, uh, opening day, Marco Gonzalez, Matthew Boyd. Let's hop into it. All right, opening day, 2022, season two. Let's do it. I'm excited. I'm excited. I like the team that we've built. And like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna work on the stadium. Just I'm trying to record this in advance because I'm going to be out of town. I can't get videos out. So I want to make sure that I can get you guys something. Heidi White, Watney on the screen for us. Let's do this. Opening day, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about the squad. I'm really enjoying it. Matthew Boyd on the mound for us. A real bright spot in the rotation. So, yeah. Let's do it. Alrighty, Sam Haggerty for the Mariners. I mean, come on. Really? All right, one pitch, one out. Super simple. Corey Seager getting his first play, too. There we go. Alrighty, starting lineup. Haggerty at short. You got Taylor Trammell, Lewis, Mitch Haniger, Michael Franco, Marisnik, Murphy, Dylan Moore, and Evan 
white. Okay, there it is. That's going to be a base hit. Out early in front of it, and it's a simple base hit for Michael Franco. Really, man, that's that's rough. Just way out in front of it, too. All right, Jake Marisnik's got some speed, so a grounder, is, we're going to have to be quick with the double play. So let's see if we can get it here. 0-2 count, and the slider, that's going to drop, man. Oh, boy, not a good start to the inning. It's not even like two hard hit balls either. Man, even the CPU's PCI placement's bad. Those are just two easy, easy hit balls, like softly hit balls, and that's a home run. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Wait, what? Oh, man. Did we miss our spot? Kind of, yeah. That We're down 3 nothing. What? A start. This is not looking good. You gotta be kidding me. Really? Sam Haggerty just absolutely manhandled that. 304 feet? That's it? That's as far as it went? Look at this home run. That's more than 304 feet. For sure. Look at that. That's a that's a man. He was uh. I mean, it was a bad pitch. It was a bad pitch. Four nothing. It's it's getting a little ugly. Nice little slider. Can Candelario make the play? Ninety one speed. There it is. That's the inning. But four runs. Oof. This is gonna be a tough game. Dude, like this Mariners team is all over me. I just, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like that's not a bad pitch. He just got up to it. Like, I mean, look at look at where the pitch is. I mean, it was out of the zone, and he somehow just absolutely mashed it. I, this, I, I just think it's just not meant to be our day. I, this is just a rude awakening. Opening day. He swung. Come on. You got, you, I'm already getting throttled. Like, you got to give me a little bit of something, ump. A slider down the middle, and there's another home run, man. Unless it goes foul. Is that foul? Is that a home run? That's a home run? Oh, that's a, that's just because of the foul pole being so low. Look at that. Is that Does that even hit the foul pole? Oh, man. Oh, I thought that was getting caught. I, I, I had a weird emotion range there. I was like, ooh. Uh, caught no okay willy castro base hit starts it off with a single who okay we got to do something here Corey seager i need you i need a home run just pull it pull it to right field come on please don't be a double play come on castro Make, hurry up don't you dare god all right so turnbull's gonna come in in the sixth and i mean uh, if we could just keep it six nothing that'd be great hopefully you know Things just don't continue to get like this because, man, this is... Talk about a way to start the season. He absolutely mashed that. That's a double for sure. Um, just not the best. Take off the wall there. 84 speed. Easy double. He crushed that pitch. How how bad did I miss it? Oh, a lot. Wow. Okay. It's not my day. It's just not my day. They're, they're, I'm, I'm hanging pitches. I'm, uh, it's, it's eight nothing, dude. Oh, I mean, look where this is. It's, it's right down the middle. It's a change up. Good Lord. I mean, let me just hand it over the win. I know, like, talk about a way to just piss off your fans opening day. You know, you have a poor season, you make some great off season signings, and let me tell you, it is not going well. So, plays it off. Pick it up. Pick it up. Oh, my God. He's going to get a triple here. Easy triple. Easy triple. All right. They're going to send him. Can we get the double play? The throw's on line. There it is. No more runs. No more. Big double play there, Victor Reyes. There you go. Oh, Adolis Garcia. Come on. Off the top of the wall, 80 speed though. I need you to hurry up, my guy. Come on, get to it. There we go. A leadoff double. There we are. All right, Yarman, you got our first hit of the game. Let's see if we can bring in 
Adolis Garcia. Come on. I mean, there it is. There it is. Is that gone? Yermin Mercedes does it for us. Gets us on the board. 8-2. Oof. Oof. That's a good... That We needed that. We needed that. Little, little change up hanging up in the zone. And there it is. Oh, it was a cutter outside the zone. I don't care. I don't care what it was. I got the runs in. We're not getting shut out today. Maybe a little comeback is in order. We're going to get a little bloop single there with Victor Reyes. There it is. Okay. No out still. Maybe something's brewing here. Willie Castro base hit. Uh-oh. 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 We're getting something. We're getting something. Honestly, it's just Marco Gonzalez is starting to hang those pitches. Corey Seager, home run here, changes the game completely. There it is. There it is. There. What did I tell you? Home run here changes the game. 8-5. Corey Seager on his debut. 360. We got ourselves a ball game. What is going on here? Ooh, Corey Seager. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. There it is. There we go. Celebrate with the team. Your new teammates. Celebrate with your brother too. Let's see if his brother can get us within two. But look at just a rip. And he knew it immediately. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Let's keep it going. There's still no outs in this inning. 8-5. Come on. And he... He's joining the party too. 8 6. <laughs> 380. 104 off the bat. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. I'm happy. Off your former team, Kyle Seegers. Brothers, back to back. That's what I'm talking about. That is huge. What an inning. I'm loving it. And then Calhoun. Ooh, I mean, good swing. If, if there's no shift there, that's a base hit. So I can't be upset there. Candelario. Is it gone? Is it going to get enough? Does it have enough? What is this inning? What is this inning? Candelario. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hung. What is that? A sinker? It has to be a curveball. He hung the curveball. Sat back on it, took it to one of the deepest parts of the stadium, 105 off the bat. We have a very, very close game. They bring in Keenan Middleton. Excuse me, you throwing up and in on Adolis Garcia? Uh-oh, Yerman's not going to be happy about that one. Two for two on his debut. A home run, two RBIs. I mean, this is, this is written in the stars for a lead-taking Home run. Come on. Oh, just missed it. Just missed it. It was too. It was. Oh, but one an inning. We're back in it. Eight to seven. We have a ball game. Oh, get some look in it. Talk about an inning from Joe Jimenez. All right. Anthony Miss Missiwicks. I don't know. We're, we're, it's Anthony. All right. They bring in another lefty, though. So, might help us out. I probably should have looked to see what kind of pitches he has. A cutter. Okay. So, that's a good start. Now I know he has a cutter. What else has he got? Cutter, curve, fastball. All right. Sit fastball. That's really what we're looking for here. I'm not going to lie. His pitches aren't that fast. But his release angle and just like his wind up make his pitches seem so much faster than they are. We take a pitch off the hip. On a check swing, I'll take it. That was the pitch. I was early on it. Oh, I was early on it. That was the pitch. That's that's the game right there. That's set. That's nine eight. Puts us in the lead. Oh, the, uh, back to back pitches. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. There it is. Corey Seager, have a day. Corey Seager, have a day. On the hill in right field. 436. Oh, what a game. What a game. What a game. I got I to gotta show you guys. Uh, settings, gameplay, Hall of Fame. Just so you guys know, I ain't cheating out here. Corey Seager have a day. 9-8 ball game. Alrighty, 2-1 count to Kyle Seager here. And... Oh, come on. Give me that insurance run. All right. Okay. Full count. I like it. I like it. 
I mean, I gotta, I got, it's, it's gotta be a cutter, right? Cutter or fastball? He's going to it. Oh, I'm all over it, man. I'm all over it. I thought that was it. Come on. That's gotta be gone, right? That's gotta be gone. Seeger brothers have a day off the batter's eye. I mean, these, these Seeger brothers, what a, what? Signings they're proving to be 441. Ooh. We gotta come up with something. The Bash Brothers or some something crazy, cause holy cow, what a game. Alrighty, 2-2 two, two to Mariznik here. We we gotta get this change up down. Come on. Get it down. No. Oh no, I said down, not right down the middle. All right, and that's why I wanted the insurance run because something like that could happen. All right, Dylan Moore's up. It seems like everybody and their grandma's hitting home runs today, but hey, we 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 got we got the lead, and holy cow, this was an absolute shootout! Holy smokes, can we finish it off here? There it is, strikeout looking. There we go. Bottom eight. We need that insurance run. All righty, Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer, it comes down to you, my guy. I need you more than ever here. Oh, man, I thought that was gone. I thought it was a tie ball game. Adolis Garcia make the play. Boom, one out. Oh, my gosh, I missed it. Fastball down the middle. Victor Reyes camp out under it. There we go. What a comeback. Ten runs in two innings. Ooh, talk about a game. And we somehow came back and won it. The Seeger Bros. Talk about a way to come to your home state, your home city. Come home. Start it off with a bang. And to think, this, this game I thought was over. I thought it was, oh boy. We were down 8 nothing, And we came back and won unbelievable how many home runs were scored or hit this game one two three six for the mariners six home runs for the mariners how many for us uh one two three four five six six is 12 home runs oh wow holy cow jeez what a game what a game holy smokes that's insane Corey Seager, Kyle Seager, Yermin, Candelario, everybody on the Mariners. Whew, what a game. Opening day? All right, so before we head into this game against the Rays, look at where we're standing. Eight and three. I know it's super early in the season, but you know what? That's, that's a good start. That's a good start to the year. I want to take a quick peek at the team. We've got Badu, only 27 at-bats, hasn't really faced too many players, it looks like, or many games. He's played in seven games. But um, overall, I mean, you look at the team, most players are doing well. And uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So I think we've we've definitely kind of put together a pretty decent team here. Willie Calhoun is struggling a little bit. That is a little worry, but you know what? For the most part, everybody's doing well. You know, like I feel like everybody's getting the job done the bench is a little little worrisome because it, right now it's kind of looking like the lineup is the main production and then look at the starting rotation matthew boyd definitely struggling it has to be that first game you know definitely killing him we've got scherzer whips a little high but overall not bad verlander eh. mize eh. and then um you can see Tariq Skubal as well but another thing i noticed is that we only have one win from our starting pitchers and I'm a little worried because I'm looking at it. Each of them have like, what, two, three starts. And they haven't really gone deep in any of their starts. Which means a lot of the bullpen is being used. We might have to rock an extra bullpen arm and rock one less like position player. Because you can see one win there, one win there, one win there. Two wins for Joe Jimenez. Two wins for Jason Adam. And then a loss there. And then four saves already for Fulmer. We might have to rock an extra bullpen arm just to be safe, just to have that depth, um, because otherwise we might be in trouble. Like that extra long reliever. So, um, yeah, that's that's so far into the season. I wanted to hop into this game against the Rays because the Rays do have Wander Franco up, so I'm interested to see if they put him in the lineup. Let's go. Let's get Max Scherzer his second debut with the team. Alrighty, here we go. Seven and six Rays versus the eight and three Pilots. 
All right, and I did not see Wander Franco in the lineup, sadly. But Scherzer is getting his third start of the season, and um, uh, it, it's been okay. I definitely think we're going to have to acquire some sort of pitching at the deadline. I feel like we're, you know, the, the aging pitchers maybe move to the bullpen. Turnbull moves back to the rotation. And please make the play Willie Calhoun. Woo. All right, here are the lineups for both teams since I accidentally missed it. Kiermaier's hitting 500 along with Austin Meadows, but everybody else in the lineup's kind of struggling. Kind of struggling. So we'll, we'll see how it goes for them as well as for us. You know, last time we played, obviously not the best of starts. Seattle came swinging the bat. They were feeling it. They hit home runs everywhere. It was, uh, it was a hectic game. I mean, talk about a comeback, though. So at least I know the team has the offense. It's just, is the pitching going to be good enough to get us wins as i realize that i don't have game audio on so i'll have to do it after this pitch adolis garcia with the bloop single i thought that was getting caught so i wasn't saying anything i'll take it though raise that 400 average there we go and Oh, please stay fair. Come on. That's two. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was a home run. I was going to say that's two foul ball home runs this inning. Is that going to be a base hit? It is. Oh, come on. First to third. Uh, we're going to we're gonna be smart. We're going to be smart. K Kiermaier's got a cannon. Got to be smart. Somehow got past Willie Adamas there. We got first and second um, with Keston up, who started us off with a single last time. Or single in the first. And that's going to be too early. It got through. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in there. Oh, what a stroke of luck right there. Holy cow. Early on, what was what was that? A, a slider? Just super early on it. Or a curveball? I don't know. E5 gets past Joey Wendell. And we got the run. That's huge. Yeah, what is that? A slider? And he just, just olays it. Just whiffed it. It was a splitter outside. Okay. Alrighty, 0-1. I mean, it was a great pitch. Uh, Corey Seager, keep the bat hot. I think that's home run eight already this season. In what, 12 games? Corey Seager might honestly go into the Hall of Fame of the Charlotte Pilots season one. This dude is insane. He is so good. Three-run bomb, Corey Seager. I mean, talk about a way to just, like, come home to Charlotte and just... They're, they're already building the Corey Seager statue. Like, no doubt about it. Did Renato Nunez just go back-to-back? -back? Oh, it's going to die on the per perfect, perfect. Just fly ball to center. That's unfortunate. But Corey Seager, I mean, the dude's a beast. Automatic homer. Okay, Kevin Kiermeyer, have yourself a home run, too. Holy cow, I thought we had him on the slider. Kevin Kiermeyer, 374, 102 off the bat. Ah, not what you want. Ah, that's that's a bad slider spot. That that's asking for a lefty to just pull it and crank it. And I mean, he he did. Oh, we got lucky there. We're gonna get a pop up on the first pitch to Austin Meadows. Hopefully, Yarmin gets under it. There we go. One out. A little base hit for Willie Adamas. I mean, hung the curveball, so I got lucky that it was only a base hit. That that was a oof. that could have been a killer home run there. Jeez. Uh, Nico Goodrum not going to make the play and it's going to be first and second. The double play shift actually hurts us there. And the little late jammed, just little, ah oh man. There it is, double play, Taylor made, easy as can be. There we go, we get out of the inning anyways. All right, Brendan McKay came in and since Kyle Seeger's kind of having a rough season, I'm going to bring in... Let's go Candelario. Faces lefties pretty well. Might as well keep it going. 295 on the season. See what we can do here. And it paid off. Candelario, 46 speed. I'm, I'm going to test it. I want to see what's going to happen here. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Single. Long single. I'm not going to lie, Hunter Strickland kind of sucks. I hate him. Uh, his windup's wonky. His release point's kind of weird. And I'm having... CJ Crone, are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? CJ Crone? No shot. Already saved spot for Michael Fulmer. This is huge. A kill Badu should make the play. I was going to say that might drop, but nah. Badu's speed, it was hanging up. First out. All right, Michael Brasso's proven to be a little bit of a trouble. A little bit of a trouble, a little bit of a problem. Two singles today. Um, please no more. I don't I don't want any base runners. I want this to be a pretty quick and simple inning. And he's gonna do another single. Alrighty, there we go. Alright, CJ Crone can make this uh one run game pretty easily. Or, you know, Yarman Mercedes can throw him out at second with ease. <sighs> okay, okay. Easy play for Candelario. There we go. Two outs. I forgot who's up. I think it's a Francisco Mejia. Yeah, Francisco Mejia. 0 for 3 on the day. Should be an easy out. That's a good start. Nice little dotted fastball. Let's go slider in. Almost hit him. Jeez. Wendell's up next too. And they wa oh, we walk him. <sighs> Tying run up to the plate. And oh man, I thought he blew it. Can he get over there? No. Alrighty. Slider in. Doesn't doesn't do what I want. Not even close to it. So we're gonna go to the changeup. Hopefully we can get the out here. He gets the strikeout. There we go. Got a little dicey at the end. Man, I thought you know Joey Wendell was about to go deep. Maybe a gap shot. Kevin Kiermeyer comes up. They take a lead or something. But you know what? Solid, solid game. And kind of the theme of the episode. Build Corey Seager a statue. Do it now. The man is unstoppable. Scherzer, good outing. Five strikeouts. Gotta love it. There we go. All right, let's do the draft and see where we finish today. Like, we're actually at a pretty good spot. We have the fourth pick, and let's see Ramon Huerta. Eh, he looks okay. Um, I'm covering, like, speed and stealing, so I'm not too worried about where I'm located right now. Actually, I could put myself in the top corner. That's probably the best corner. Lou Reed and Marcus Hernandez, or Marcos Hernandez. Marcos Hernandez looks pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, could use another pitcher. Let's go see what else we got. Greg Means, David Delgado, looks decent. Um, we've got Dan Eason, Luis Robles, and Bradshaw. But all these guys are like long-term prospects. You know, the closers, of course, are going to be pretty pretty quick turnarounds. They normally are. And I was kind of hoping there would be a position player that would be kind of soon. Ooh, Roberto Carrera. I might be in on him. A center fielder, Dan Sherman, got decent hitting, got decent fielding as well. Kind of like the looks of that. 5'7", all right. Um, and then I think that's going to be kind of it. So, I mean, Cletus Dahl from Canada. But, um, I mean, Brian Gonzalez looks kind of good too. Long-term prospect, but Salvatore Franco looks okay. But do we go Dan Sherman, another outfielder? I don't necessarily know if we need an outfielder. Like, let's see. Let's uh, toggle back to the panel. Center field. We don't necessarily need another outfield prospect. I feel like we're pretty stacked there, unfortunately. But the thing is, like, I don't necessarily want to go with another pitcher. Because we went with Merle Cosmo last year. I mean, we could go with a reliever. But that's kind of boring, too. But at the same time, this guy's probably going to be very, very good. <sighs> Is there anybody here that I feel like maybe could sneak into the second round that I feel like maybe we could pick them up? They'd be a really cool prospect to get, like a Pete Mota. Um, maybe like, who else, who else, who else, who else? Potentially second rounder. We've got Romeo Arthur. And that's maybe maybe a Victor Almanza. So I'm kind of torn between the two. Center field, starting pitcher. But we don't, ah, do we need the, actually, do we need the outfielder? Avisal Garcia is not necessarily long term. Victor Reyes not necessarily long term. It'd be a kill Badu. Maybe one of the youngsters there. Maybe Brian Packard. Maybe Kevin. We do have Kevin from last year. So you know what? Since we went Kevin the first round last year, let's go starting pitcher. We're gonna go Carrera with the first pick this time. All right. So we lost our second round pick because we obviously took Corey Seager. So now it's kind of like who could we take here? That would be worth picking up. Richie Little looks kind of nasty. Not going to lie. Um, he looks kind of good. I might take him. I think uh, Richie Little's going to be the move here. 
it was either him or Will Harding. Mikey York looks good, but I'm going to go Richie Little. Richie Little looks pretty good. We're going to go with him. So let's see what we can get here. I wonder if that one guy is still there. Pat Valentine, no. Jamie Dorta, no. Oh, did somebody take him? Let's see. Did somebody take who I wanted? It was a first baseman. I think it was. Was it him? Caleb O'Connor? No, it wasn't. It was Mikey York. The Brewers took him. Okay. So now... I guess we'll take another closer, Will Harding. He looks pretty MLB ready, to be honest, at 23 years old as well. So there's that. I kind of want to take a position player now, just to kind of have another one in the draft. But it doesn't really look like there are many left over. Jeez. So we're kind of just guessing here at this point. Let's see here. Yikes. He doesn't look great. None of those guys are going to be good. None of them are going to be good. It looks like position players are uh, at a premium. Holy cow. Uh, maybe we should have went a little crazier on the position players to start it. So, I guess we're going and finishing off with pitchers, right? Round four, we got two picks left. I mean, kind of a disappointing draft, not going to lie. But it looks like position players just were at a premium this draft. I thought we had a little bit more. Unfortunately, we didn't. So, you know what? Just... Just to get a second baseman, I'm going to take the second baseman. And then we'll finish off with most likely a pitcher. Because there are plenty of pitchers. So, mm, we'll, we'll just take him. And then let's see how the draft went. Um, I mean, it was, it was okay. It definitely was. So, we went with the pitcher instead of... Who did we look at? We looked at the outfielder, right? The center fielder, Dan Sherman. 68 overall. A potential... I mean, he looks good. He's got speed. He's a switch hitter. I didn't even realize he was a switch hitter. <sighs> Man, he looks good. Vision, the disciplines there. Salvatore Franco's a 60. So let's go see what we did. Let's go see how our draft went. Because I'm a little intrigued by how it went. I'll put myself in the bottom. And boom. 69 overall starting pitcher. 91 potential. I'll take it. I will take it. Richie Little, 85 potential 73 overall Ooh, that is nice 68 overall 90 potential for will harding okay eric etling or etlin 79 potential woody carlson 75 potential and the last guy ramos 65 potential but you know what okay we, we got some pitchers to look forward to for the future so i don't think we need any more pitchers i think we need to focus on the position players but i feel like we kind of went heavy with the position players in the in the free in free agency so i feel like we're doing a good job with the draft I, I really do i really do so you know between those guys right there let's go take a look at last year's draft as well with kevin i mean kevin's gonna be a beast we know that i mean we know that frank blackwell as well position player forgot about him and who else did we get um Osuna, 64 overall. We got Erskine, 64 overall reliever. And then we had Barrios and then Merle Cosmo as well. So, I mean, I feel like we've we've been pretty good with the, the draft picks for sure. I definitely think getting that center fielder would have been cool. But we have so many center fielders already that I feel like uh, we're, we're, we're good where we are. So, we're currently sitting first in the division, 27 and 20. Awesome. Love to see it. Currently, nobody for the All-Star game, which which does suck. Definitely does. Um, but let's take a look at our team as a whole and see how everyone's performing. Victor Reyes is doing decent. One home run, seven RBIs, and 100 at-bats. And Kyle Seeger's definitely picked it up. But you can see he's going down pretty rapidly. So he's looking like a guy that we're probably going to do one and done. So we got to do something pretty pretty big this season. Um, a kill by Dew. Let's see here. Definitely wish the on-base percentage was better, but you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I might even drop him in the lineup and try to find a new leadoff guy. I guess maybe Willie Castro is going to be our leadoff guy versus righties. And then maybe just drop him a little bit there. But okay, so Keston's hitting 261. Um, eight home runs, though. Eight home runs, though. So I'm going to take that for sure. Corey Seager, 12 home runs, 13 doubles. What a season he's having. And I'm really happy we got him. Um, Renato Nunez is having a good year as well. Eight home runs. Nine home runs for Candelario. Okay, Candelario. I see you. Adolis Garcia. You know what? The on-base percentage is in a good spot. Yeah, his hitting stats are going down, which does suck. But he's actually having an okay year. I think he'll be fine. Akil Badu, we've already looked at. 
Um, Willie Calhoun is definitely struggling. And then Yermin Mercedes, okay. He's okay, right? So let's take a look at our pitching staff as a, just a quick little peek at it. Matthew Boyd has definitely gotten back on track. Five and one record. Love to see it. Scherzer's doing okay. Verlander, they're both already down pretty low in terms of rating. Casey Mize is really struggling. I might send him down, to be honest. I might. Um, and same thing with Scooball. Um, let's see here. We might put Scooball there and then flip those two. Ugh, yikes. Uh, Daniel Norris is having a very good season. Soto's struggling. Jimenez is having a great year. Love to see it. Adam is struggling. Cisnero is struggling. We might move Jimenez to the setup. And then Michael Fulmer, one blown save, but 13 saves on the season. So he's doing quite well. We'll take a look down below, see how everybody's doing. And we might have to turn to the bullpen pretty soon. And Beeks, Holder, and Alexander all doing well. So we might have to start rotating some guys in and out. And then we take a look at the starters. I mean, they're doing pretty well. Hunter Green struggling a little bit. But outside of that, everybody's doing pretty well. And Merle Cosmo is getting roughed up a bit, which is worrisome. But his hits and walks per, per nine are pretty low. And I kind of had a feeling that was going to be the case with him. So... That sucks, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, looking at the farm system, Austin Martin, 235 average. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Torkelson's at a 255. He's up to a 74 overall. So maybe later on in the year he comes up, especially if we need to make a trade and it opens up a position. Um, Paredes, definitely struggling. I think he's going to be a player I look to trade. He's just not going to cut it. Uh, Packard's two, 236. Not great. Not great. Um, and then Dingler, 262. Okay. Parker Meadows, 168. Yikes. Um, Riley Green's 230. Kevin's hitting 316. He might have to get called up pretty soon. Cabrera, 174. Blackwell, 339. And then Amaya, 184. So that's kind of the looks around the league and the team and how everything's going. We're currently in first about a third of the way through the season. So I can't complain. I can't complain at all. Everything is going great. I feel like the draft's going well. I feel like we're doing pretty well. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Any trades that are of note that I should be on the lookout for? Not really. Not really. Jordan Hicks for Mount Castle and Santander for Ahmed Rosario. But outside of that, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Maybe we uh, start looking at the, the trade block and seeing who becomes available. There's some nice names available. There are some nice names available. So maybe maybe we're a little active in the trade deadline and try to really push for the postseason this year. Let's see. I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Two games, of course, the draft. And I mean, Corey Seager, talk about a pickup. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I really do. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and make sure you never miss a video. And in the comment section, you know what to do. Just let me know what you think of the series, what we could do, who to add, who to get rid of, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.